Hello and welcome back to another episode of our Brentford career mode. How are you all doing? We have started the season really, really well. We are 10 games unbeaten with 18 points. We are in the top six. Our next game here coming up against Newcastle. I'm going to say, I want to say it's a game we can afford to lose. But to be honest with you, our objective is only to finish mid-table. So it doesn't really matter this game. I would love to win the game though, just to close the gap to two points on them. They are in the top four, doing very well at Newcastle. They always do very well on the career mode anyway. We have got West Ham to play next, Leeds United and Aston Villa. I'm going to see one of these games, but I'm not sure which one it's going to be. We're going to decide when we get closer to those games. But for now, let's focus on Newcastle. I would give, um, I'll go with my strongest starting 11 here. And I think I'll give Pinnock a game because he's been complaining for a couple of weeks now that he needs game time. And it's, it's only fair to play him and see how he performs in a game like this. Transfer offer for Sorensen, I'm not interested at the moment. Yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and make that change here, bringing in Pinnock for Pontus Janssen. I'm gonna move Pinnock to the left-hand side and the rest of the team looks good. Oli Watkins, he's, a, he's in, a little bit of a deep in form, you know, a player who scored 36 goals for us last season, our player of the season and the championship player of the season as well. Incredible, but he's only scored he's only scored two goals this season. Like I said, a little bit of a deep in form, but I do believe in him. Even though he's not scoring goals, his build-up play, his movement, his hold-up play has been excellent this season. The goals are going to start coming for him sooner or later. But yeah, we just have to wait and see and be patient with him. I've got an international offer here from Ireland. I'm not interested in an international job, to be honest with you. Santiago Sosa wants to play this game as well. I'm not gonna start him, but I'm gonna bring him off the bench just to keep him happy as well. Newcastle United could be a tricky opponent for this one. Dubravka in goal, Lasalle's there, the captain. They've got players in the right sort of age, really, in this team. Funes Mori and Joe Linton up front. It's not the strongest of strongest of team there, but they are in the top four. They've only lost one game this season, winning most of their games as well, comfortably in the top four at the moment. They always seem to do very well on FIFA, like I said. But yeah. The two men they're playing up front and the pace they've got on the flanks, that's something we have to watch out for. Jensen. Matthias Jensen now, little space in front of him. Can he switch it out wide to Ben Rama? Manquillo, the right back, is going to get there first. It's the second time, isn't it, that we're playing against a flat 4-4-2 team. It could be, it's... It's a formation where it either goes extreme, one wide, Norgard there had a pop. But it's not far away, you know, from the centre defensive midfielder. Not far away. Yeah, I was saying this flat 4-4-2 formation. That is not a free kick. Come on. He got in front of him. Wemo was in front of Lasalle's. He got in front of him to win the ball. How can you give a free kick when he's in front of him? And he's giving him, giving him a yellow card as well. That's disgraceful from the referee. Absolutely disgraceful. But Jensen is won it back to Norgard. Norgard out wide now to Mbremo. Mbremo, who's looking to prove the referee wrong here, is won it back. Can he hit the byline against Gulam? Gulam is so, for some reason not getting close to him. Mbremo to the byline, pull back to Jensen, and it's in the back of the net. That's exactly the sort of payback we wanted. After that unfair yellow card to Mbwemo, he's gone here to do something amazing. To set that set that one up for Jensen. He got onto the byline there. The, the pullback was excellent. Jensen not with the best of connection. But nonetheless, it's in the back of the net for our first goal. Bogle has made that run that he always does into the far. Good tackle there from Gulen. Gulen was like, you're not doing that again. It's happened first time. This time I'm going to put a great tackle. Cross there from Ben Rama. Pass, really. 
Newcastle hasn't really yeah, that that's how terrible they've been in this game I can't believe I'm just calling them terrible and they've gone ahead to get a shot on targets that was that was a good save from Raya by the way Funes Mori couldn't get couldn't get that one on target it's all oh, it's been Newcastle ever since I said they haven't been their best in this game said Maximan now out wide he's gonna hit the byline it's so quick Joe Linton back to Maximan back to Joe Linton the shot's been blocked ah oh, the shot was blocked there only to only to Funes Mori the striker with a lovely control I don't know I don't know why Jansen Pontus Jansen have allowed him to turn there I think that was Jansen who let him turn and as soon as he got as soon as he got into his right foot that wasn't Jansen that was Pinnock Jansen is not even playing this game Pinnock has led him to 10 and good finish there Newcastle looking for that second goal just before the end of the first half here good block by Rico Henry then Rama to Josh De Silva Josh De Silva can he make one of those powerful runs he's not slow by any means John Jashelv is struggling to keep up with him here Josh De Silva across to the far post Jensen almost close to the header that would have been a great way to stop the first half just end the game referee don't make Pinnock go all the way back and waste his energy and then you end the game the game went into the fifth minute the referee just wanted Pinnock to waste his energy there but it's still one all in the first half things have to improve in the second half definitely has to improve Newcastle are in the top four at the moment it's no surprise the way they've played for the later stage of this first half we cannot underestimate them oh my god what has he done there what has he done there Oli Watkins gonna pick that one up has he got the space to go the pace to go past La Salle trying to bend one to the far post he had to do that one on his own there's no one quick enough can he force the keeper again oh another good save what is happening here Dubravka has made two great saves earlier on in the second half oh, trying to do too much there on the world kids way too much it'd be a shame if we don't get our three points here no guards with the silver just the silver he can hit one another save from Dubravka he's made three world-class saves in the space of five minutes here the Newcastle United goalkeeper Gulen has cleared that one how are we not in front in this game how the hell are we not in front St Maximan good tackle good tackle there from Bogo and Buemo is gonna go inside and oh. That's a tackle from Jensen. That is a great ball winning play there from Matthias Jensen to Mbuemo, who again is very tired there. Mbuemo to Jensen. Jensen with the shot. How the hell are we not in front in this game? It's frustrating to have chances upon chances like that and not being able to take this one. No guy's going to hit it. It's been blocked oh my god imagine if we go ahead and concede a goal here in the last minute Kaletic share there stepping up to win it back again another great save from Dubravka he must he definitely is Newcastle's man of the match here that's a good save from the goalkeeper very very good save come on we're gonna make this count here from the corner Ben Rama into the box. He's been dealt with in the far post. Just a silver with another shot. And yet again, another save. Substitution there. Um, Olsen is going to come in for Mbuemo, who is absolutely shattered in this game. This, this is, this is going to be a huge disappointment if we don't win this. Pinock with the header, but it's off target. Kaleta Chao with the header, not Pinock. Ferreira is going to come in for Josh the Silva. We need to go more attacking. Come on. Last opportunity to get all three points here. Olsen, lovely pass to Oli Watkins. Oli Watkins to Ferreira. Ferreira is going to have to cut back here. There's nothing in front of him. 
try to bend one, but it's off target. I mean, Dubravka is definitely the man of the match for this game. The goalkeeper was amazing, making. This was worse than the Fulham game last season in the championship. We had a similar game against Fulham, where the Fulham goalkeeper was just was just amazing. And Dubravka have done exactly the same thing here. Matthias Jensen was our man of the match. Look at that, we absolutely dominated every part of the game. Just couldn't get the winner. It looks like we're playing every team in the top six at the moment. West Ham, another top six club here. But we are going to look to put the disappointment from the previous game. We're going to look to put it right for this one. I say disappointment because we deserve to win that game against Newcastle. Ollie Watkins got a few good chances, you know, to put us 2 0 up when we were 1 0 up in the game, but we couldn't take our chance, our chances, and we ended up drawing that game. But this is a decent lineup from West Ham here. The likes of Fonals, Felipe Anderson, Sebastian Haller, full of good players. On paper, they are better than us at least. For us, we have made four changes to the starting lineup. Um, Santiago Sosa in the CDM position, Olsen on the right hand side, Pontus Janssen comes back into the team and Ferreira in place of Josh De Silva. It's a big pitch here, this London Stadium, the home of West Ham. If they are going to attack us for 90 minutes on the break, they are going to be in a lot of trouble because we have got the pace up front to hit them on a counter attack. Out wide there on the right hand side to Bowen from Four Niles. He's gonna go back to midfield Four Niles again. He's found himself a space to Bowen. Bowen is always gonna try to hit one from that left hand side. They've been forced back though. Suchik, West Ham playing the ball. Nice crisp passes in our own half from West Ham. Bowen to Gaspar. Gaspar back to Bowen. What the hell is happening here? These are playing like Barcelona. Good interception though from from Bogle. Sosa now, this is what we need to hit them on the break. Sosa to Jensen, Matthias Jensen to Watkins. That pass could have gone 50 years ago out wide to Olsen. I have no idea why we kept playing it in the middle. Jensen though has found himself a space. This has got, this game I've got. This game has got a draw written all over it. Oh. Kaletica, what a tackle from Kaletica, he's a very good defender you know, he's not slow either, he's quick, very very quick. Most of this first half has been played in our own half, Vogel here to Jensen, Jensen to Ferreira, Ferreira using the pace of Oli Watkins there, surely he's gonna get away from Balbuena. Yes, he has. Ah, oh, Balbuena there with a ridiculous tackle. There's no need for that. The goalkeeper already had that one closed down. It's a red card as well for him. It's a red card for the centre back. All of a sudden, this game is going to turn around to our favour. It's been all West Ham just before this moment. And bloody hell, they almost killed him there. Both the goalkeeper and Balbuena, they've both clattered, clattered. And Watkins here, who's gonna step up to take this one? Yes, it's in the back of the net. It's good for him to get a goal as well. He hasn't scored for a while now, has he? That goal should give him a, a little bit of a confidence going forward. He's been missing chances. He missed a couple against Newcastle, like I said before. But well, hopefully this game this goal gives him confidence. Not the best of penalties. Not the best taking penalty you would ever see, but it did the job there it's it's in the back of the net and that's all you want that is all you want West Ham a little bit rattled at the moment is giving the ball away from kickoff Ben Rama to Jensen Matthias Jensen out wide to Jaden Bogle who has been Mr Consistent ever since we got him at least seven out of ten performance he gives you Watkins there with a ten for his second goal in the bottom left hand corner and that's what goals give to you as a striker gives you confidence he's only scored two goals all season before this game and he scored two here after scoring from that penalty that's all we want from that's all you want from your striker to score goals his fourth goal in the Premier League Jensen Jensen to Ferreira Ferreira to Ollie Watkins can he get his hat-trick the run of 
Olsen on the far post. What a block from Diop. What a block from Issa Diop, the West Ham centre backs. That's as good as scoring a goal in the other end. That was going in. Definitely going in that one. This game has gone from being very uncomfortable in the first 20 25 minutes to going all in our favour. It's it's all us at the moment. West Ham just can't come out of their own half. You'd expect it. They've got a man sent off. When you have a man sent off against a good footballing and counter-attacking side like us, you're always going to be in huge trouble. That's it for the first half. More of the same in the second one. Suchik to Fonals. I'm surprised they haven't really tried to change things up a little bit. Suchek now to Halle. Halle to Fonals. Don't go out of position. Don't go out of position. Carletta Char. I'm, I was just saying about it's a shame they haven't been able to change things up and that's the reason they haven't changed anything. Probably believed on the forward players they've got on the pitch. For now as and Halle combining very well there. Still still a long way playing with 10 men. If we can get one more to calm down the nerves it'll be good. Nice switch of play to Felipe Anderson in the 85th minute here. Anderson is going to cut back to his right foot, cross now into the box, dealt with by Rico Henry, the header from Haller is way off target, that was never close enough to, to trouble the goalkeeper, it was never close enough. It's all about seeing the game out now, when you're 2-1 up at this stage of a game, you can't concede a stupid late goal. Jensen to Umbuemo out wide. Umbuemo's first touch is good. Back to Jensen. Jensen to Watkins. Ollie Watkins just couldn't keep hold of the ball. It's going to be all over here any second from now. And it is all over. 2 1 victory for us. A red card for West Ham did not help them. But still, they played very well in the second half. They were a, a, a little bit rattled after they got sent off and we got that first goal. But they got things set, settled down in the second half. It wasn't all that comfortable, but it's a 2-1 victory for us away from home. Ollie Watkins with the two goals, man of the match, well deserved. West Ham with one shot on target and they converted from it, so that's good for them. There is so much going right for us at the moment that there's every reason to be positive. We're seventh in the league table, you know, thanks to that sending off for the West Ham centre back. It made the game a lot more easier for us than it should have been. But yeah, West Ham pulled the goal back in the second half, but that wasn't enough for them to get something from the game. Liverpool top of the table, Everton are still second at this stage, which is surprising. City in, City in third, Newcastle in fourth. They've got Spurs and West Ham. We're only one point away from Spurs though and five points away from Newcastle in the Champions League position. Chelsea, Manchester United and Arsenal, the big boys, they're struggling at the moment. West Ham in 13th. Taking a look at the bottom three, we've got Leeds United, just one point. We've got them to play next, I believe. We've got West Brom with three points, Burnley, Aston Villa. We've got, in our next two games, we're playing teams in the bottom four of the league table. I am going to sim the home game from those two and I'm going to play the away game. Hopefully we don't drop points when we do sim those games. We've got ourselves the final scout report here that we are going to take a look at. If we can find one or two more decent players to to join our youth academy that would be great and so far it's not looking like it and we have got Feliciano Maldonado Feliciano Maldonado his potential is great but his overall is not looking very good but you know what I am going to promote him he's the only one that's going to be promoted and that's it for the end for the end of our scout report in Spain we've got one more to look at though the one we sent to Denmark. Come on, get us one good player from Denmark. Yes, Gustav Olsen. How many Olsens are we gonna have on the team? Gustav Olsen, I've got a good enough overall and a decent potential. He's gonna, of course, be promoted to the youth team. Any other one good enough? We've got Oliver, uh, Oliver Stevenson here. 80 to 94 potential is very good. The overall isn't the best though, but still I am going to promote him to the youth academy. 
and that's our scout report ended now i'm gonna try to train those players as much as we can and promote one or two of them to the first team depending on how good they're gonna become for us but yeah our next game against Leeds united squad rotation is vital here and ben rama is the unlucky one from the forward three to drop out from the team and Buemo, Olsen and Oli Watkins is the forward three we are going with for this one and the defense looks exactly the same from our previous game Norgard comes back into the team, Da Silva and Ferreira in the more box to box role Leeds United have only got a point from their last three games Ferreira there with the only goal of the game surprisingly there was no substitution you know what, I'll take it, it's a 3 point for us, it's a clean sheet as well for the defence which is very good. I'm gonna simulate this, this training drills here. Um, Jaden Bogle is now 76 rated, he was a 73 rated player when we signed him and he's already gone up by plus 3 overall. Green as well, our young prospect centre back is getting close to 71 rated which is good. I'll try and loan him out on a short term loan when the January transfer window comes along but for now I'm gonna keep him around the team training with the first team is gonna be vital for his improvement I'm gonna give him I could be I could start getting him off the bench if we're comfortable in games but I do not want to risk it going into this game against Villa then I am going to bring back Ben Rama to the team and Buemo in the right hand side. Olsen is going to drop to the bench and Ferreira as well. Unlucky because he scored, he scored the only goal in our last game but he's going to drop to the bench for this one for Jensen. Jensen can go on the right hand side and Justa Silva can go on the left hand side. We're keeping clean sheets though, that's very good. I think, I think we're up there with the most amount of clean sheets this season. I mean, after that first game, we did concede three goals. We had to make defensive reinforcements, bringing in Kaleta Char and Jaden Bogle. And they've made so much difference. Look at that. Riot has kept eight clean sheets, is the second highest in the league. Just one shot of Allison, the Liverpool shot stopper. They are top of the table, Liverpool, so there's no surprise there, really. One thing is certain for us though going into this game here against Aston Villa we are definitely not going to get relegated we're too far away from the bottom three at the moment for us the question is are we going to just meet the objective of finishing mid-table or can we do better than that and get one of those Europa League places we have still got the FA Cup as well which haven't started Jack Grealish playing in the CDM position there that's crazy what is wrong with this game what is wrong with this game with some of the some of the formations and and positions that play some of the top players is ridiculous how is Jack Grealish playing at the CDM but anyway it's not it's not I'm not in a position to complain about that for us here we just want to get the victory or at least get something from the game McGean and Green are moving the ball quite well on that left hand side both players are combining just passing to each other really it's almost like they're the only two players on the pitch finally to my target after all that you still give the ball to us it's crazy how the CPU play sometimes in this game Hurrahan, Hurrahan to Joe McGee to Wesley, Wesley back to McGee this has been a boring game for us probably our, our worst 25 minutes McGee there hasn't got the pace to go past Kaleta Char that's why a pacey centre back is always good to have in your team. Jansen with a good head there, the silver. Now Norgard. Wesley there working hard like a bulldog to win that ball back. What? What the hell? He'd never do that, Wesley. I don't think he'll ever do that. It's a corner. Aston Villa have been the better side. They've been by far the better side, but they haven't created anything to trouble us. They're just moving the ball well. Good header from Ben Rama on the near post. The shot's been blocked by Carletta Char. He does that a lot, doesn't he? Doesn't he? He puts his body in front of all these shots most of the time. Anytime we get a block, it's always Carletta Char. It was going off target anyway. He wouldn't have counted, but it's good to see your centre back willing to do that. 
Green to Hurihan, who is offside there, definitely offside. Forty minutes and still no shot and target. Norgard out wide to Mbwemo. Mbwemo is always going to come into his left foot. Mbwemo to Yensin. Oh, what a what a good interception by Chester, the Aston Villa defender, James Chester, I believe. We need to stay focused here, you know. Into yes. the second half, we've still had no shot. We have I don't even think I've seen their goalkeeper here. It's, it's okay. probably the first time we're having to see the Aston Villa goalkeeper. Oli Watkins gonna force the goalkeeper into a good save though. That was the first time we we got close to Aston Villa's 18-yard box to even have a shot and target. It's crazy. In the 52nd minute, we're having our first shot and target. Gilbert a little sloppy there. He's giving the ball to Ben Rama. Ben Rama to Matthias Jensen. Forcing, forcing the goalkeeper into another good save. Oh my god, we have gone from inability to create anything to having chances. Come on, we need a goal here. We need to get that goal. Aston Villa are not looking like they're going to score a goal. They're not looking like they're going to score. But we need to score a goal. Otherwise, this is going to be another draw for us. It's going to be our 7th or 8th draw in the, in the Premier League this season. Which is way too much at this, at this stage of the season. El Ghazi to McGean. Come on, five more minutes to go. Five more minutes to go. Matthias Jensen has got a little space to run into. Nice pass to Ole Watkins. Can you use his pace? Ole Watkins. Good save from the goalkeeper. Good save there from the goalkeeper. The corner has been dealt with. I have got two centre backs that are at least six foot four, and yet we can score from corners. That's a free kick. Definitely should have been given a free kick there. El Ghazi, Aston Villa have got yourself an opportunity to try and get something in the last minutes of this game. Samata, oh, that's an awful ball from Samata. Bogle is going to be there to intercept. And that's it for the end of the game. Nil nil against a struggling Aston Villa. They, they, they had probably had more of the ball overall in the game but they never troubled us it never looked like they were ever gonna score a goal in this game it's a shame we never looked like scoring a goal either you know we had two shots on target earlier on in the second half other than that it was Jensen there the center back with the man of the match says it all both teams having a combined three shots on target it, it was it was a boring game boring game to play for the first time since the start of the season, Everton are out of the top two. Manchester City have now taken that position. I think they beat Everton in their last game away from home 3-0 as you can see there on the right hand side. We're still in the top six but it's only a matter of time because the likes of Chelsea, West Ham, they've both got a game in hand. Chelsea are playing Watford, you would expect them to win that one. Wolves are in ninth. Chelsea in 8th, Manchester United in 10th, but they have got a game in hand. I think their game in hand is against Newcastle, who is in the top 4. Hopefully Manchester United can win that game. I wouldn't like the gap to stretch between 4th and 6th at the moment. It's only 1 point, so that's good. Arsenal still struggling in 11th position, Bournemouth in 12th. I can't believe Aston Villa got a point from us. We couldn't even, we didn't play well in that game. We didn't create too much chances. The ones we did create, the goalkeeper made good saves. But yeah, Leeds United still one point, West Brom on three points, Burnley on six points. That one point Aston Villa got from us, you know, push, it moves them a little bit far away from, from the rest of the bottom three. But anyway, but anyway, our objective this season is still to finish mid-table and so far we're doing so much better than that. If that continues, you never know, we could just find ourselves into that top six and get Europa League football for next season. But I'm not, I'm not thinking too much about that. We're going into a tough month of December anyway. 
we have got West Brom to play first we've got Chelsea Southampton Leicester we have got um, Wolves to play as well and then the fixtures we start again we go back to playing Burnley and Crystal Palace whom we've already played this season but anyway smash the like button on the video if you've enjoyed it so far subscribe to the channel if you're new to it and share the video if you can that would be amazing and I'll see you all in the next one bye for now